that we once made to God. We went back on our word. We lost our concern for keeping his laws and his commandments. And if we don't watch out, it's going to be the thing that leads to our demise. It's going to be the thing that takes us all the way down. I said it's going to blight our character. And it's going to tarnish our testimony unless you rise up and do something about it. There's the story of King Louis the 16th. He was tried for treason. He was found guilty. And he was executed by guillotine on January 21st in the year 1793. His son was just a young prince at the time. But keeping with dynastic order, he was proclaimed King Louis the 17th by exiled royalists. Because of this, the Republican government of France decided to imprison this eight-year-old child in solitary confinement. He was handed over to vicious men with the express command that they should wreck his character. The vilest, lowest influences were to be let loose so that this child of royalty might become the mockery of the enemies of the court. No boy, prince, or pauper has ever been brought face to face with such shamefulness as to which this young prince was exposed. Unmentionable were the temptations placed in his path. Indescribable the company into which he was thrown. But Brother Evans, they said, whenever one of those men would tempt that young boy to do something that he knew in his heart was wrong, he would always answer them by saying, I cannot do that, for I am the son of the king. And I say that's what we need in this hour. We need some people who will stand against the pool of this world, who will oppose the temptations of the flesh. My friend, when the devil comes after you, trying to offer you the pleasures and the attractions of sin, and you know what you need to do? You need to tell the devil, I cannot do that, for I am the son of a king. I'm a child of the king of kings. And I'm afraid some of us have forgotten we've got royal blood in our veins and that we're an heir to his heavenly throne. I say we need somebody who will stand face to face with the enemy that will look him straight in his eyes and that will tell him I refuse to let you take my testimony. I refuse to let you ruin my reputation. I refuse to let you compromise my character. I've got an image to uphold and I'm going to keep on serving God no matter what. Is that your desire tonight? Hallelujah. Look with me at verse 5. The Bible reads, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath and behold a young lion Lord against him. Think with me not only of the potential of his life, but also think with me of the peril of the lion. Notice the Bible tells us in verse 1 that Samson went down to Timnath. It then says in verse 2, and he came up. Then again in verse 5 we read, and he went down. And once more in verse 7, it says, and he went down. It was a reoccurring pattern for him. Samson went up and down. Up and down. I'm afraid that's the same thing a lot of people are doing today. During a youth rally, during a special meeting, we're up. But when that's over, we're back down. During revival, we're up. But when revival's over, we're down again. Some of us have a roller coaster religion. And just like Samson, because of our inconsistencies and instabilities, we are faced with a lion that roars against us. We are confronted with an enemy that wants to destroy our very soul. You see, Samson would have never met this calamity had he not went down and he not went to Timnath. For Timnath means the place of the vineyards. Now as I said earlier Samson had made a covenant in his heart and part of that covenant was that he was not allowed to eat or drink anything that came from the fruit of the vine. So really Samson had no business going to Timnath. And I say so it is for you and I. And hey, my friend you've got no business going to some of the places you're going and you've got no business doing 
some of the things that you are doing. Because any time you walk away from the covenant promise of God, you will always go down. You will always be on a downward spiral. I said any time you break your vow of separation, you're setting yourself up to become a victim of Satan. And then come on now. And then we wouldn't have the trouble we have with these lines if we just go up instead of going down. We wouldn't have such a difficulty defeating our temptations if we just get closer to God than the world. And I want you to understand tonight this line is a picture of anything that opposes you as a child of God. It's a picture of anything that hinders your walk with the Lord. It's anything that challenges your faith and your confidence. And I'll tell you tonight, I don't care who you are. If you live your life for Jesus very long, that lion will roar against you. You may come to church every service. You may shout. You may run the aisle. You may be the first one to testify. But if you let that lion live, when you leave here and you're all by yourself, when you're all He's not going to stop trying to destroy you. He's not going to stop trying to devour you because he's waiting in the vineyard for you to pass by that way again. I want you to understand there are many parallels that can be drawn between lines in the natural sense and this line that we fight against in the spiritual realm. There are many similarities that can be made between the line that Samson faced and this lion that we face. You see, lions are considered to be the king of the jungle. The Bible informs us that Satan is the god of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. They also say that a lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. Very intimidating. Very overwhelming. Peter instructs us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a what? As a roaring lion walketh about seeking who be made of battle. They say the lions are very intellectual animals. That they can run up to 50 miles per hour. And they cannot tell you, so it is for Satan. The devil is very crafty and cunning not to glorify him in any way. But he is an intelligent foe. And not only that, but he's fast. He's swift. And I've heard some people say, there's no way the devil will ever get a hold of me. He'll never catch me. And well, that's what he's trying to do. Again, Peter said, he seeking who he may devour. I said he's a predator and he's looking for prey. Not like what the Bible says, don't you? It tells us that as soon as that lion roared against Samson, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. I believe he can do the same for each one of us. And I want to tell somebody tonight, the lion may be roaring, but the Lord is reminding. Satan may be seeking to devour, but there is a Savior who is seeking to deliver, and if you'll submit yourself to Him and to the moving and the influence of the Holy Ghost, you can defeat that lion right here tonight. You can overcome it right here in this very yeah. service. Yeah. You believe that, church? Yeah. During the rainy season, the valley. In India, it became uh, very flooded. They said the natives fled to the highest peak. And as they waited for the waters to subside, they saw a huge lion swimming towards them. Some of you may be a little skeptical about that, but if you research it, you study it out, you'll find lions can in fact swim in some waters. They said as that lion drew closer to where they were, those natives immediately became terrified. As you can imagine, oftentimes children and adults in India are killed and destroyed by those ferocious predators. But they said when that lion finally reached the peak where those natives were, it showed no sign of threat to them. Instead of attacking or harming them, it just laid down very calmly. The raging waters had frightened the fierceness out of that wild beast. 